Today in the shop, we'll do some repairs on a speedometer. Okay guys, this is a uh, another customer's car. Um, it's a 71 standard Beetle. Came in for uh, a few things, oil change, valve adjustment, and so on. But I'm also gonna fix uh, his speedometer. It's got a few issues with it, so uh, let's look into that. Okay guys, here's the odometer out of the, the green bug. Uh, and if you're wondering, just real quick, if you're gonna don't know how to take them out, um, basically you're just gonna remote, remove all of the uh, wires that are connected to the back of it. Just make it draw a little chart and kind of write them down so you remember how they go back. And then you'll take out your speedometer cable that just unscrews, slides out. And then lastly, you're going to have a, a screw on either side on these little hooks that hold it into the dash. Just take those out. That's a Phillips head. And then the speedo will, will come right out. Now on this particular one, I tested it by using a uh, putting a drill on the speedo cable and just spinning it slowly. And uh, the odometer works fine, but the needle the needle's got like that little twitch to it. Like it doesn't really know where to settle. Um, and also, as you can see, it's broken. The end of it's broken off. So uh, we'll replace that needle and then replace the, the part that, that spins the needle. And then while we're in there, we'll also go ahead and, uh, as you can see on the, the turn signals, the green film or green gel is gone. So I got a, a piece of that. We'll put that in. And then lastly, I'm going to go ahead at the uh, customer's request and reset the odometer to all zeros. So uh, let's get started by taking this thing apart. So the first thing we want to do is take off the, the front glass. And we'll, have, we'll do that by removing this, this ring. And uh, it basically, um, you're just going to pry it off. It's not held on with any kind of a fastener. Or anything like that it's just kind of wrapped around the speedometer itself now you can what I usually do is take a, a small screwdriver and just get it started in one spot now, some people will go all the way around it doing this and prying it off but it kind of kind of messes up the uh, the ring so I'll just I'll just kind of get it started and then I'll take a uh, uh, a plastic utility tool and uh, and go around it and just kind of push in there and go around it like this and just keep doing that a few times until I get the the ring to kind of open up a little bit to where I can I can slide it off Okay, now I'm gonna switch to a trim tool that's a, a little bit thicker, and that way it'll help roll that, that ring out a little, a little better. And there it is. Okay, there's his his green gel or film. And just to let you know, on the on the inside of the glass, you, you got this outer ring. You have the glass, and then there's this inner ring inside here. And we'll go. I can see here he's got some. Uh, some kind of maybe maybe somebody put some glue on it at one point to help hold it in the dash for some reason I don't know but I'll try to clean that up and get that off if not 
in my uh, spare speedometers, I might have a, a better ring to put on there. So we'll look at that. Okay, guys, for uh, disassembly, the first thing you want to take off is this fuel gauge vibrator. And it has one tiny screw right there. And then you'll disconnect it from the the back of the, the fuel gauge right there. And the next thing you can take out is the fuel gauge itself. And it's got two small screws. Just like that. Now we can take out the the inner parts of the speedo itself. And that's held in with, with these two screws here on the back. And this will just lift right out. So here's the piece that, that holds the uh, red and green film. As you can see, maybe the red ones look kind of worn out and brittle too. So I'll go ahead and replace those along with the green one. Um, here's a here are the the gels you can pick up from Wolfsburg West. It's a little packet it comes with with all three of the colors. All right, guys. So now we're at a point where we can uh, take off the needle, and uh, I'm just using this coffee can to set this thing down in, so to you know lay flat. And uh, what I'll do is I'm going to use a couple of pry tools on on either side of this and just basically, you're just gonna push up on it and, and lift it off. But first I'll take a couple of pieces of tape and lay on here to kind of protect the, the this dial and uh, try to get this needle off. Okay, I got my tape on there and I got my, my tools underneath it and what you wanna do is kind of grab underneath this black center. That's what's actually connected to the, to the uh, the shaft behind it and uh, so I'm just going to apply light pressure I'm going to put my finger over the top of it so it doesn't go flying if it pops off you will kind of just wiggle it and, and there it is just like that that one was actually kind of easy as you can see on the back of it well, there's the shaft and then What's connected is the black piece, and this white piece comes off, off of the black. Just like that. It just kind of sits on there. Okay, so we got that off. And now we can uh, pull off this, this dial here uh, by removing these two screws. And before I take this off, I can already see by looking behind that little shaft there, that return spring is uncoiled. And that's why that needle was kind of acting, you know, fishy. So I'll take this off. Just like that. And I don't know if you can see this, but um, let's see. Behind this 
right here there's a there's a return spring and it's it's all out of whack it's not coiled up like it should be and that's why that that needle was jumping around so uh we'll uh we'll basically just replace this whole unit and uh put it put it in the speedometer so here's a uh, replacement piece uh, that I'm going to use on it and I'll, I'll go ahead and clean up this this rust on here it's just some surface rust but I wanted to show you that coil I don't know if you can see it maybe right there if you can see how nicely uh, nicely spun that coil is so it's kind of it acts as a a return for the needle Whereas this one I took off, um, again, if you can see it, you can see how that one's kind of, kind of came loose and it's not, not really working anymore. And then I'll also take some, uh, some kind of cleaner and make sure all these numbers are a, a nice white color. Okay guys, as you can see here, I got the odometer set back to all zeros and I uh, didn't really want to bore you with a uh, video footage of me doing that, but basically I'll just uh, kind of talk you through it. Um, down here you got these tumblers that, that turn the odometer and you'll basically just take this pin out and I just usually just take one end of it out. I don't take it out all the way. And then pull it away from the the odometer wheels and spin them around to zero. And then you'll you'll check it. The way you want to line it up is you just put your plate on there or your dial, and uh, make sure they're all lined up on zero, just like that. And while you got this. Uh, pulled away and you, you, you spin it to zero, you got to set all these back into place one at a time. And it's very, uh, it's a very tedious kind of uh, deal and it's time consuming. You got to be real patient with it. But basically, if you look at this, these uh, tumblers have two, they have a, like a narrow tooth and a wide tooth. So as far as, you know, if you spin them, it doesn't matter where they're at on the on these dials. But as long as you've got all of the narrow teeth lined up and then all of the wide teeth lined up all in the same spot. I think that's key to what, what makes it work properly. And then to get this out, this pin is put in here. They slide the pin in and then they just kind of crush it on one end to keep it from, from, from coming out. But if you'll take like a, a pair of needle nose and just uh, get on one end like this and, uh, and push that out that way, and then make your changes. And then when you get it all back together, you'll need a, a bigger pair of channel locks and you'll kind of put it on there like this because you want to grab the other side and then squeeze it back in, in the hole that way. Or actually it would be this way. Yeah, I like that. So that's how you would set, set those back to zero. And this is a, a neat little feature when you're doing a complete restoration. You got a new motor in the car. You kind of want to reset, reset the odometer. Okay guys, I think I'm at a, a point now where I can start putting this thing back together um, like I showed you I got I got the uh, odometer all back to zero um, I got the, the rust cleaned up off the back of this so this this looks pretty good and then uh, I also cleaned up the uh, the outer ring and the glass cleaned the glass up and uh, this ring had some I don't know like old glue or something on it but after I cleaned it off, it still looked a little rough. So I went ahead and 
sanded it and just painted it black so that don't look nice on there. And uh, then I got the gel put in for the, uh, the turn signal. I basically just uh, use this black piece as a, as a pattern and uh, trace it out on a, a piece of paper and then use that piece of paper to, to cut out my gel and, and then put that in. So that'll look, look nice against the dial. Okay, we'll start by putting this back in first. And uh, it just slides right in through that hole there. And then you wanna make sure you get that right there lined up. That's the where the bolt goes to hold the fuel gauge vibrator on. And then this goes back on with uh, two screws. Okay, then we, then we can flip it over and put the, um, the fuel gauge in. And that too goes on with a couple of screws. And then we'll attach the uh, fuel gauge vibrator. And it's got a this male female connection on the back and then and then one screw. All right, I'm gonna set it back on my coffee can. Oh, that's not gonna fit. Okay, next we'll put in the, uh, the dial. And that goes in with these two little tiny screws here. Okay, now we're ready for the needle. So I picked up a, a couple of new needles from a guy named Steve who has, uh, you probably heard of uh, Speedo King before. Uh, he's got a company out in California that does restorations on Volkswagen speedometers, but uh, I was able to pick up a couple of needles from him. And uh, so I got this one. Actually, I got two because I'm doing another uh, restoration on another car. And, it, and one of the one of the tips that he gave me on uh, putting this needle on is um, you, you got this pin right here where the uh, the needle rests when you're at when you're sitting still. And he basically said when you when you put the needle on, press it on. But put it on this side of the needle and then and then bring it over the needle until it rests. And that gives it just a little bit of preload so that when when you when it spins for the first time and comes back, it will it will rest all the way on the needle. So we'll we'll do that.
All right, that looks good. So now I guess we're ready to put the uh, the lens on the on the front of it. And then to, to re-fasten the ring, I'll just take my uh, trim tool and go around it and just kind of press this up back over the, uh, the speedometer. Okay, there it is. Now she's ready to go back on the car. All right, I just wanted to show you this real quick before I uh, end the video. Um, this is a little diagram I made before I pulled it out. Just something to help you if you've uh, never done electrical before. But basically, I just, you know, made a picture of the, the back of the speedometer with the locations of the wires. And uh, I just put down the color of each one and then I numbered them. And then up here on the wires, I have corresponding numbers to where those go back in. So like, like this one's number seven, number nine, and and so on. But uh, I, I just tagged each one of them with a piece of tape and wrote down the number so I can know exactly where they go when I reinstall the, the uh, speedometer. Well, hey guys, appreciate you watching, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Take care.